So let us revisit the question that we had asked earlier. The question is when is V norm with respect to P which is defined as V transpose PV when is this a valid norm and we are asking this question only for symmetric matrices so we are asking only for symmetric matrices now the answer to this is that whenever we can just define it like this so we can say that whenever P is positive definite right so whenever p is positive definite we can say that this is a valid norm and uh, the from here you can see that the direct definition just to ensure that this is positive would be that v transpose pv has to be greater than zero for all v provided that v is not equal to zero so as long as v is not equal to zero this has to be strictly positive so this would at least satisfy the non-negativity and the definiteness properties right so this is the definition of positive semi for positive definiteness and in this case vp norm is a valid norm then let us relate it to the eigenvalue decomposition so if you remember suppose that the eigenvalue decomposition of p is q times lambda times q transpose so in that case, what is V transpose PV? So what is V transpose PV? It is equal to V transpose Q lambda Q transpose and V. So now let us regroup these things. You can observe here that uh, this part and this part are somewhat similar. In fact, you can denote Z is equal to Q transpose V. So this is Z. And then you can see that Z transpose will be equal to V transpose Q. So this will be your Z transpose. So this means that this part can be written as Z transpose lambda Z. And another way of course of writing this is that lambda I Z I square. Right. And if you go back to what we had looked at the weighted norm, you can see or you can remember that this is a valid norm square this is a valid norm square of z so this would be equal to z lambda right so this is a valid norm square of z whenever so for this condition we require that lambda i are all strictly positive right so this is another definition of positive definiteness so one definition is this one so this is the first definition this is another alternative definition note that this would ensure that it is a valid norm with respect to z but here the mapping between z and v is one to one because you can say that z is equal to q transpose v and also you can say that v is equal to q, q times z because Q transpose is Q inverse. So there is a one to one mapping between V and Z and that allows us to write in this way. So therefore it is also a valid norm with respect to V. And the same would not have been true if Q was not invertible. Right? We would not have been able to make a similar conclusion in that case. So summarizing what we have seen so far is that a matrix allows us to define a valid norm whenever valid norm in this way whenever either of these properties hold first property is that uh, v transpose pv is greater than zero for all v not equal to zero and the second property is that lambda i of p which is the eigenvalues of p are all zero for all i all greater than zero for all i actually uh, it turns out that these two properties are equivalent we have not proved it but it is indeed the case that these two properties are equivalent and uh, if either of them are true we say that the matrix p is positive definite 
right? It's a matrix P is positive definite. And the notation we will use for that is that P greater than zero. Whenever P is uh, said to be greater than zero, we mean that it is a positive definite matrix. This does not apply entry wise. So whenever we say that P greater than zero, we do not mean that the entries of P are greater than zero. Instead, we mean that eigenvalues of P are greater than zero. And the equivalent definition is this. Right? There is one more scenario where you can easily prove that P is positive definite uh, or uh, one more definition, which is that whenever you can write P as L times L transpose, where L is, uh, so this kind of decomposition is called a uh, Cholesky decomposition. Here L is a lower triangular matrix. Here L is a lower triangular matrix and uh, for P to be positive definite, we require L to also be full rank. So why would that be the case? Why would this uh, imply that P is positive definite? You can check by plugging in V transpose PV and plugging in LL transpose here. So V transpose PV is V transpose L, L transpose V, which is basically L transpose V, L2 norm square, right? And we know that this is greater than zero when for all V not equal to zero, as long as we can ensure that L transpose V is not equal to zero when V is not equal to zero. So when V is not equal to zero, it should not happen that L transpose V is equal to zero. But if L is full rank, then this is already true. So this holds when L is full rank. So just to summarize what I said, I am saying that whenever L is full rank, L transpose V will not be zero unless it until V is equal to zero. And as long as L transpose V is not equal to zero, this norm cannot be equal to zero as long as V is not equal to zero. Right? So the definiteness property or the property that V transpose V PV is greater than zero for all V not equal to zero follows as long as L is a full rank matrix. In Cholesky decomposition, we obtain a lower triangular matrix, which is also full rank and therefore uh, we can conclude from there, if we can carry out the Cholesky decomposition, we can conclude from there that P is a symmetric positive definite matrix. In fact, this is one way to check if a matrix is positive definite. So in MATLAB, you can try to find out the Cholesky decomposition of a matrix and if it is successfully carried out, then we can we are sure that it is positive definite and otherwise it will give an error that there are negative eigenvalues. A related concept is that of positive semi-definite matrices. So the only difference here is that all the strict inequalities will get replaced with uh, non-strict inequalities. So a matrix P is said to be positive semi-definite if the notation for this is that P is greater than or equal to zero. Again, I must emphasize this, this is not entry wise. So greater than or equal to zero does not mean that the entries are non-negative. Entries can be negative. Uh, other, another way of saying the same thing is that the eigenvalues are non-negative and then the this is related to the third definition which is that v transpose pv is greater than or equal to zero for all v so now we don't need to enforce the condition that v not equal to zero we can just say that this is greater than or equal to zero for all v so as long as this holds then we say that matrix p is positive semi-definite and finally, I can say that if P can be decomposed like this, 
A A transpose any A. This can be any matrix A. Right? Any matrix A. And in fact, it can be of size N cross M also for any M. Right? Even then, this decomposition is fine. So then P is positive semi-definite. To see this, to see this last property, you can observe that suppose that I have a matrix which can be decomposed like this then we can see that V transpose PV for any arbitrary V evaluates to V transpose A A transpose V which evaluates to L2 norm square of A transpose V now by definition norms are always non-negative so this means that this should be non-negative regardless of what A is and regardless of what V is. So this means that automatically the third property gets satisfied. So this implies that the third property gets satisfied and therefore any matrix which satisfies this automatically satisfies the third property. So that's why this fourth property or ensuring that the fourth property holds implies that the third property also holds. So that is all for the positive semi-definite definition. Note that I must emphasize that here we are only considering symmetric matrices. Whenever the matrix is not symmetric, uh, this kind of definition, particularly this definition, cannot be used. And so in this course, we will not consider matrices which are not symmetric. For whenever we say positive semi-definite matrices, we will mean matrices that are symmetric. Right? The reason is that whenever matrices are non-symmetric, their eigenvalues need not be real. So if the eigenvalues are not real, then this notion of them being greater than or equal to zero does not arise. So that is the reason we are sticking to symmetric matrices because for non-symmetric matrices, the, this positive semi-definiteness has to be defined in a different way. So just remember that. So whenever it is given that a matrix P is PSD, you can automatically assume that it is symmetric for the purpose of this course.